Hey, what's going on? Monk Mage Tower. Here it is. Uh, honestly, this one, like the Paladin and the Resto Druid, I feel like a majority of the Mage Tower was very easy for Monk, but the last boss fight is where I struggled the most and like had the most challenge because the last boss fight, you just don't do very much damage as a Mistweaver Monk. So it felt like the last boss fight just lasted so much longer than my other healers. So it was definitely down to the wire. Um, but I'm going to help you guys overcome all the challenges in here. So you can see my talents. I'll go ahead and pause it real quick. You can see my talents at the top left here. Uh, a lot of the talents are super flexible. So pick what you feel good with. What I personally liked uh, that I would recommend taking is Healing Elixir and uh, Song of Chiji. I think it's called Song of Chiji. Uh, did I have my talents up at the beginning? I think I did. No, I did not. Okay, so Song of Chiji is just a replacement to Ring of Peace. It's basically just another way to interrupt mobs, but it only has a 30 second cooldown instead of 45 with Ring of Peace. So I just, I felt like it was a better choice. Uh, I had, I didn't try at all with Ring of Peace, but the 30 second cooldown was really nice because you can use it every single phase. And sometimes you can even use it multiple times in the same phase for like the later, the later uh, waves and stuff. So I liked it. Uh, it's just like a two second cast time and then it sends out this very slow wave that sleeps all the mobs that it hits so uh, it's very nice for like aoe interrupting and stuff for the the soldiers that we'll talk about soon so first wave not very important um just arborless so what these do they just do random points of damage and then they'll teleport across the room they'll always teleport behind you and they will cast mana sting and what you need to do is just have the blue arrow hit somebody else in your group or if you're going to let it hit yourself just instant dispel it off of yourself if you don't instant dispel it you lose a bunch of mana it's terrible don't let it happen um, if it hits a teammate it will only do damage to them over time but you should still have the same mindset of dispelling it as fast as possible and i'm sorry if the video is lagging a little bit i'm like uploading to youtube right now so it might it might lag a, a little bit while that upload's happening but it should smooth out as we go um, okay, so next up, I'll rewind it a little bit for this next wave. So this next wave, we are going to leg sweep right off the bat, and these are the mages. So we want to stun the mages as much as possible, pretty much. Uh, so what the mage will do is cast a uh, arcane blitz, and it'll do a sizable amount of damage to a party member. You can see right there it hits Granny. Uh, like the other healers, I've mentioned this in some of my other videos, uh, it doesn't do nearly as much damage as if you're playing like a Holy Priest or a Resto Shaman. I don't know why the scaling's like that, but the mages don't hit very hard as a Mistweaver, so you can let them hit your teammates and not worry about it too much. Uh, every time a successful Arcane Blitz is cast, the next one will do more and more damage, and it keeps accumulating up. So that's why we want to try to stun them and lock them down and stuff like that uh, to avoid them getting too many casts off in a row, because once they get like a third cast off in a row, it's just going to do an immense amount of damage to whoever it hits, and it's really dangerous. Uh, so the name of the game is to just interrupt as much as possible and keep our group topped up. So in this wave, I'm not too concerned about HP because this mage is going to die and then nothing else is dangerous. The Arbalist that's running around does very little to nothing. So again, we leg sweep as soon as the wave starts, and then I let it cast once or twice, and then I'll use Song of Chiji to interrupt it again. You do want to use Song of Chiji sooner rather than later because you need it for the next phase but you can kind of draw out the timer to make sure you have it back up for the next phase by just not dpsing the arbalist after the mage dies you just let your teammates kill it slowly and you'll have that cooldown back up same thing with leg sweep you can have leg sweep back up if you just play it patiently and kind of just wait out the arbalist so the uh third wave i believe we only use uh, Song of Chiji and maybe Paralysis. So I think we save Leg Sweep for Wave 4, but we'll get to that as we get there. So Arbalist dies easily enough. Again, we're standing here because this Mage and Risen Soldier right here are next, and basically same concept with the Mages. They're just going to do damage. We let the first cast go off, and then this Soldier, this is what's going to get important for the next few waves. The Soldiers cast Knife Dance, when they're finished casting it, they'll channel, they'll continue to channel the ability for five seconds and deal damage to the entire party. You want to interrupt this, and you can't use a regular interrupt, even though we don't have one, but still. You have to use some kind of CC or stun or something like that. So what we're going to do is use Song of Chiji here, I believe. 
And there is something to mention, is you do not want to interrupt this ability from the soldier right here. Like if I cast Song of Chi-Gi right now, it'll just interrupt the soldier for a second and then he'll just recast the ability. You have to let him finish the cast and then cast the stun. So I could pre-cast Song of Chi-Gi a little bit sooner here, but either way, we cast it as his cast finishes. And there we go, it stuns him and now he will not cast that ability again for some time. It also helps interrupt the mage and makes him lose his stacks. You can see how he shrunk right there. He lost all his empowered stacks. And we're just helping kill the mage. And then when the soldier gets out of this stun that we put him in, this is the other ability that the soldiers do that you need to be very mindful of, is they will fixate you, or sometimes they'll fixate a teammate. I don't know why, but sometimes they fixate your NPCs. You just need to either A, kite it if it's on you, or B, just stand still and out heal it. As a monk, you have plenty of abilities and toolkit, things in your toolkit to allow you to just sustain and out heal that with a simple like enveloping mist and a vivify or two. Um, just be cautious of your mana, but again, um, it's not too terrible. So I just opted to heal through it. You can see it does a lot of damage, so just be careful of it and be aware of how much damage it's gonna deal and you should be totally fine. Here's Knife Dance again. Uh, we are gonna probably use Paralysis. Yes, we use Paralysis to interrupt that one since it's such a short cooldown. And now instead of doing damage to the mage, I'm just focused, or the soldier, I'm focused on just healing myself and healing my group up so that we're nice and topped off for this next wave. And we get into this wave. So what are we gonna do here? We let the first blitz go off and then we let the second blitz go off and we're gonna crowd control once these Knife Dance get cast. So there's two soldiers this time, so it's especially deadly. So we're going to leg sweep. It interrupts the mage. It interrupts both soldiers. Again, make sure you wait until that knife dance cast finishes and then use the stun. And then remember, as soon as these soldiers are done being stunned, they're going to fixate you or a teammate and do a lot of damage. So you need to either kite right now and get away from them because they run insanely fast, or you need to just be very ready to heal yourself and like press a defensive, fortifying brew, Life Cocoon, all of that stuff is very good at it. So here they both fixate me. Finishing off the mage here. I do cast my sleep here. I think that was mostly just to get them off of me because I was a little bit scared that they were just gonna start like one-shotting me. And again, this ability is only a 30 second cooldown, so I think it's fine to use it there. Um, but maybe just kiting beforehand sooner would have been the smarter play so that I didn't have to use that ability anyways. And then here they'll go back to just regularly attacking Jared and other teammates. And then they should fixate again. It's not always the case. It's very random. Like see here they didn't fixate. Sometimes they fixate you twice before they do another knife dance. But here they do knife dance. We don't have that song of GG because we used it. Normally you would use it here to interrupt them both. But instead, uh, because I'm a Pandaren, I just paralysis one of them. So there's paralysis on the first one. And then I'm just going to Panda Punch, which is the racial ability that you have. I don't remember what it's exactly called. Um, and we interrupt the other one with that. It's like a micro stun. So there it is. Then this one fixates me right away. And we're just out healing it. Very scary. The other one is fixating my teammates, so that's where you have to be very careful. That can be really dangerous. And then here they fixate, one of them fixates again. There's the other fixate, but he's fixated on Jared. So again, it's kind of awkward. So this is where I should have definitely used stuff like Healing Elixir, Fortifying Brew. I should have been using things, but this is showing you that you don't have to play perfectly to get through this stuff. Like I am making plenty of mistakes here and we're totally fine. As long as we just remain like confident about it, we are totally, totally fine. Here I quickly cast a Song of Chi-Gi. It's a little bit late on this knife dance, but there it goes through him. And then I'm just going to have to out-heal the second one for just a second. So we get Jared topped up. And now the rest of the phase is going to be very simple. Because if he casts a knife dance, we can just like paralysis or just heal through it. And now we're going to go to the fifth and final wave. Uh, same concept here, but this way is even easier because there's only one mage, one, uh, one soldier, and then an arbalist. So it's just one less soldier, which means that the wave is significantly easier than the previous one. So we're going to just leg sweep right off the bat here because we have, you know, all of our crowd control available to us. There's only one soldier, so we don't need to AoE stun like we did before. And then I believe I'm going to paralysis this soldier because I don't have Song of Chi-Gi up yet. There's the paralysis. We're helping finish off this mage. There's the fixate. So we have two options. We either kite or we heal through it. Again, I try kiting it, but he just 
he just runs full speed at you sometimes, so you have to be very careful. Song of Chiji to interrupt the knife dance. And my teammates are fixating the Arbalist, so I'm just kind of helping heal them up. And from this point, it's literally just don't let the soldier cast a full knife dance, and you have, like, no way of dying. And then just heal yourself when you're fixated, because, again, you can just easily outheal it by yourself if you're fixated. Next knife dance, I would assume I'm in a paralysis. Uh, I pan and a bunch? No, that was a paralysis, yeah. Okay. And then the fixate again, healing myself. Definitely could be using a defensive here and stuff, so use defenses for those fixates if you're going to tank them. And that is it. And I could just leg sweep this to be safe. I have stuff available, but I'm just really not paying that much attention to it. So it works out either way. And there we go. That's the whole uh, first phase of this mage tower. So going into the second phase of the Mage Tower, I don't remember if I switched any talents. I think maybe I took Diffuse Magic, but really play whatever's comfortable to you. A lot of the talents aren't going to make a huge impact as a Mistreaver. Um, a lot of it's just kind of like healing-based and utility-based, which isn't going to... This next stage of going up the stairs and doing all this stuff is mostly going to be just a matter of how much damage can you deal, So, and keeping yourself healthy. So whatever helps you do that, feel free to take those talents. Uh, so here, when we start, we're going to get these flickering eyes. What they do is pulse for AoE damage around themselves in a small area. We're stuck in the middle, so we need to kill one and then work clockwise or counterclockwise and just kill them one at a time. But when they die, the trick is, is that they'll do like 80 to 90% of your health and damage. So you need to be very mindful of that happening because it can be incredibly dangerous if you kill two of them at the same time or if you kill one right after the other, you're just going to kill yourself. So you need to make sure that you are killing one, full healing yourself, then killing the next one. And because we're a monk, we have to melee them. Crackling Jade Lightning doesn't really do enough work to do this fast enough, so you have to kind of step in and out and melee them. So just get them low HP, and then when they're about one hit away, you just step out, full heal yourself, then finish them off. There's a Crackling Jade Lightning. You can see it's, it's pretty slow. So I heal myself here, and then we're going to go back in, melee it a few times, use a couple abilities, get it a little bit lower, and I'm full health. I pop my defensive. I'm going to kill two because I still am full health, and now we're going to back up. I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to finish off this one. I step in, hit it, step in, hit it, step out. You're kind of just doing this little dance. When you run up here, make sure you don't just roll into the orbs up here that I did because uh, they can do a lot of damage to you. So you can just spinning crane kick to disable them next time. And then here, this is a very straightforward pull. You're just, uh, these guys don't really do too much. It's just that when they're all alive, they can kind of randomly spike for a lot of damage on you. So just use stuff like leg sweep or other CC that you might have, and then just get all the felt bats down with AOE, and then just single target the dominator down. And he does absolutely nothing. He just stands there and hits you, so... And then as he's dying, you're going to open up this gate, and you can see that there's this feared mob, like, running down the stairs, if I rewind it a tiny bit. So when I turn my camera, you'll see him, like, running up and down the stairs. And what you should do is, while you're opening this gate, try to target him over the gate, because it makes it easier to dispel him, because you have to dispel him. So as soon as he, as soon as the gate opens, I just dispel him, because I targeted him, so it makes it easier than trying to, like, mouse over dispel him when he's running around in circles. And then these, there's these three mobs with arrows over their heads on the stairs, these red arrows. You just need to heal them to full health within like a 20 second time limit or 10 second time. I don't know what the time limit is, but you just need to full heal them. Uh, otherwise, they turn into mobs and fight you, which is not ideal. And then you're just going to fight this Arbalist. Same thing as the Arbalist outside, does almost nothing. Uh, we don't have something to block the mana stings this time, so you either need to use some kind of crowd control or instantly dispel yourself. Like here, I get it. I don't instantly dispel myself. You can see how low my mana got. It's not really that big of a deal on the stairs, but be mindful of it and try to just dispel yourself instantly when you get it. I think here I leg sweep. And we just continue moving along. And then once this Arbalist is dead, when you open the next gate, by the time you get to the very top of the stairs in this next part, you want about two minutes left to spare. Otherwise, you're kind of behind on time and things are looking a little bit risky. Maybe you could probably get away with like a minute and 45, a minute and a half, but it's the more time you have, the better. So, And then when you run up the stairs here, I made another mistake. 
I tigers lusted myself and then ran. What you should do is spin and just run up the stairs or tigers list yourself stop start spinning and then run up the stairs because then as as you spin and run up the stairs you'll just disable all of the the orbs like you can see i do it right here so i'm just spinning disabling all the orbs open the gate and now we have a small mini boss and three flickering eyes from the very first room that we encountered so same exact concept applies kill one flickering eye at a time take your time heal yourself before you kill the next one Make sure you're fully topped off. But now we have a mini boss at the same time, which we need to be mindful about something. So he's going to cast something called Mind Spike. And when he does that, it will do a little bit of damage. It does like 10% of your HP. There you can see it got really deadly because I stepped too close. So the combo that you can die to in this room uh, is a Flickering Eye dying and then the Dread Corruptor hitting you with a Mind Spike at the same time. If that happens, you will probably die if you don't have any defensive or anything rolling, even if you're full health. So you either need to stun the Dread Corruptor every time you're going to kill an eye, or just make sure you wait until he does the Mind Spike, then full heal yourself, then finish off the eye. So here you can see I CC him, I'm hitting the eye, and I finish off the eye. Now I heal myself before he hits me with that Mind Spike. These lasers around the room, they don't do very much damage. You can stand in them if you want, but again, just be aware that it's going to do extra damage to you. And then here I get stuck in the corner a little bit, and I stand way too close to this flickering eye here. So I'm taking it way too much damage. So next time, just try to, you know, you want to move around the room in a way that doesn't get you caught in the eyes. And there it was a little bit dangerous, but we recovered. And now it's just a case of singling this guy down. And uh, you don't really take, there's nothing dangerous that happens here. You can tank the eyes or again, you can just kind of move away from them like I do. And that is pretty much it for the last room. So I'll go ahead and just skip ahead. And for this last bit, uh, I believe, I believe I switched to upwelling because it just felt better from when I made some attempts on this boss. And then other than that, I think again, a lot of these talents are very uh, just kind of personal personal choice. So just pick what feels comfortable for you to do the most amount of healing because you're not going to be doing very much damage in this phase, unfortunately. So it's all about just keeping your group alive and keeping yourself, being able to heal yourself effectively and uh, get through the fight without using all of your mana and stuff. So in this last phase, there is a couple tricks. So this very first uh, phase that we'll call it in, uh, in this last stage is the your NPCs are going to fight each other and deal damage to each other constantly, so you need to keep things like Renewing Mist going and keeping them topped up. And then at the same time, the boss is going to be dragging in friendly NPCs outside of the arena, and you need to heal them to full HP before they reach him. So there's a couple tricks to this. First thing is each wave of these friendlies is a mage from outside, a arbalist from outside, and a soldier, so it's one of each. If you're going to let any hit the boss, make sure it's the Arbalist. Do not let the Mage or the Soldier hit the boss because he'll resurrect them when this is all done and you do not want those mobs alive. So always focus the Mage. You can see here I'm healing the Mage. They'll always spawn, I think, in the same order. So it's always over here. Here, let me. Uh, so over here on the right is going to be the Soldier. Over here in the middle is going to be the Mage. And on the very left behind me, is the Arbalist. And they'll, even if they spawn kind of like clumped up together, it's always in that like kind of counterclockwise order. It goes Soldier, Mage, Arbalist, counterclockwise. Um, and here, there I'm healing the Soldier because again, they're the most important. And then we heal the Arbalist last. And there we go, they're all full HP. Now I'm healing up my friendlies. Be aware of your mana, use Thunder Focus T, use Renewing Mist, use things that help you be mana efficient. You can also drop Chiji here or Yulon if you have it. Manatee would also be great if you have it. And again, we're healing this mage. And then we're going to heal the soldier, not worrying about the Arbalist. And I believe if it's this wave, I let this Ar yeah, I'm going to let this Arbalist get through to the boss. And there's a reason for this. If you let one mob get to the boss, he will resurrect them when this phase is over. 
before you fight him. So it gives you some breathing room before you fight the boss, which means one, you can drink before you fight the boss, and two, you can just regen mana, even if you don't get a chance to drink, you can just regen mana passively by fighting the mob and not wasting a bunch of mana while you're fighting it. And it lets you just regain a lot of tempo for the for the final boss fight, which you really want all of your mana for. So here we let the archer hit him. And then we have the third and final wave. And this is where we're going to heal the soldier first. And then we're going to heal the mage. And then we're also going to make sure that we get this arbalist topped up. So we're kind of hitting them both and cleave healing them. And there we go. And now you can see my mana is... And I didn't notice this until after, so that's why I'm mentioning it now, is you can drink. Right now, You are. I'm out of combat. I could be drinking right now. Instead, I drink a mana pot because I think I thought that I was still in combat for some reason. But you can just regular drink here and save your potion. That way, you can like use a damage potion on the boss or save a you know a mana potion for the boss. And then you'll see here that the boss will resurrect that arbalist that we let through. And of course, the arbalist does nothing, so we can literally just sit here and now we're nice and full mana, so that when we go into the boss fight, uh, we have a solid amount of mana to work with. Here we go into the last boss, and like I said at the start of this video, what you're going to notice very quickly is this boss takes forever to kill as a Mistweaver. You do no damage, and your teammates do not help very much. So do the damage that you can, Rising Sun Kick when you can, Crackling Jade Lightning when you can, help do damage when you're able to, but otherwise the focus is just all about surviving as long as possible. Um, the first thing I would mention as a monk is don't be like me and start this fight incorrectly. Uh, I got greedy because I didn't think I would need to on my monk because my other healers were totally fine. Um, also, you can use drums and things like this here. So I did not use any drums, so that definitely didn't help. Uh, but I would stand like right over here on the very, very edge because you want to work your way around the edge of the room because of the two major mechanics that the boss does. So the first major mechanic is he's going to jump and leave this giant green puddle on the floor. This will fill up the room incredibly quickly. And... By the time he's like 20% health, you're going to see that the entire room is filled with this stuff and it gets very dangerous. Uh, the second mechanic is this debuff. You either track the debuff or you can see it above your head as this like flaming orb. And what it's going to do is when this debuff expires, it is going to do damage to the rest of your group, your party members, not yourself, just the rest of your group, depending on how high your HP was. So the higher HP you are when the debuff expires, the more damage the rest of your group takes. So the trick is... You need to keep yourself alive to not die when the boss jumps on you and drops these green puddles on the floor, but you need to keep your health low enough so that you don't one-shot your group when this debuff expires. So the sweet spot is bouncing somewhere between about like 20 and 40% HP at all times. Um, so here you can see I'm leaving myself very low HP. I pop the defensive. And then right as that debuff expires, I am ready to heal myself or move out of this stuff because the boss instantly combos and jumps on top of me and tries to essentially one-shot me because I'm having to leave my HP low. So here we jump out. I'm going to heal myself up a little bit with my healing elixirs, focusing healing into Jared and my teammates, just keeping them nice and healthy so I don't have to panic later. I have the debuff again. I'm going to leave myself a little bit low HP. I am going to put a hot on myself. And this is where it comes into play of using these green puddles. So you can see, I noticed that I'm like, I'm getting to like that 30, 40% mark. I don't want to be that high health when this debuff expires because then the rest of my group takes a lot of damage. So I'm going to dip into the green puddle on the floor and take damage on purpose. There again, it gets super, super dangerous because the boss instantly combos me. That was a little bit too close for comfort, honestly. That's where I would recommend using something like a defensive or just making sure that your group is full health so that they can take a big hit if you're not low enough HP. This is where I like upwelling a lot because it just gives me a nice long channel on Essence font, which is really nice. Here we have the debuff again. And the whole point is don't spend a lot of your mana healing yourself. Spend your mana healing your teammates and use the utility and defensives and health potions and things like that to keep yourself alive uh, in between Basically, right as the debuff expires, you should be hitting yourself with something big. So you should be health potting, or you should be pressing a defensive, or you should be... Like right here, you can see I time my Vivify so that the moment this debuff expires, I'm going to hit myself with a huge Vivify. Because now the boss is going to jump on me, I'm nice and healthy, I don't have to worry about dying to that jump. Because I timed it in a way to where 
I healed myself right after the debuff expired, but not too soon to where the debuff now hits my group for way too much damage. And you don't want to just sit at low HP forever. You need to keep yourself healthy. So this is why I bubble myself here just to be safe because I don't know exactly when the boss is going to jump. It's not necessarily scripted. It's kind of randomized. So you just have to be very mindful of that. And then you can see the boss is still 50% health and I'm like almost out of room. Like this, we're already fully around the room and there's only going to be a little bit of room left in the middle. So what I'm going to have to start doing is dropping puddles on top of previous puddles. And that's where it gets incredibly, incredibly dangerous. And you can use stuff like stuns and CC on the boss. So do that because I wasn't doing it and it's definitely not smart. So here I get the debuff. I'm going to make the boss. I'm going to like heal myself a lot here while I have the debuff so that I can just sit here and stand in the green stuff so that the boss jumps on me and drops another puddle out here. It's very dangerous. And we heal Jared up just in time. There, we're losing a lot of our room. This is where I'm going to have to drop off another puddle outside. So I jump out there. I'm going to keep myself healthy even though I have the debuff. But I see that it's about to expire. So this is where I stop. When I have like three seconds left on it, I'm like, okay, I have to stop healing myself. I just have to take this hit. So I'm going to stand out here, take the hit. I walk back out. Now I'm going to heal myself up really quick before the boss jumps on me again. I can jump back out so the boss jumps back on me because I don't have a debuff right now, so I don't. I can keep myself nice and healthy. Now I step back in. Probably going to get myself a little bit lower here by stepping back out, making him... Remember, I'm, I'm like baiting his jumps way out here, even though it's dangerous. And now the boss is 10% HP. I can touch of death. So I'm about to do that. I'm going to jump back out, touch of death, leg sweep. Just delay him just a little bit longer. Going to drop another puddle. Tiny little bit of room left. Not going to heal myself. That's just cleave healing that's hitting me. And this is where I'm like, oh, I'm way too healthy. This is really bad. And Jared barely survives. And then the boss dies. So it's tough. But you just have to be very mindful of what you're trying to accomplish and getting that nice balance of that like 20 to 40% health range and then keeping Jared and the other two NPCs very, very healthy at all times without expending too, too much of your mana. So you just have to be very efficient about your healing and stuff like that. So using Vivify with Thunder Focus T is a great idea because it saves a lot of mana. Remember, use a mana potion during this phase if it comes up or don't use it at the start like I did and instead just regularly drink and then use other things to keep yourself alive and then uh, you'll have the mage tower complete. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it helps. Good luck and I will see you guys later.